I was quite surprised. And she was off a bit before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away. Looking good. G'day, I'm Phil from PhilTech. Today, we're reflecting on how we started with building a single cylinder model aeroplane engine over 30 years ago, and then how that sort of evolved into the current Leslie liquid cooled V12 engine that we're building our first batch now. After successfully making the single cylinder engines, we were thinking, where do we go next? Do we go to a bigger cubic capacity? That's what most model engine manufacturers do. Um, but I thought we wanted to be a bit different. We already had the tooling for the 1.5 cc pistons uh, and cylinder liners. Um, maybe we could do something with that. So we had to go at making a V-twin. So this is what we came up with. Um, this was a, a more sophisticated engine than we'd built previously. Um, firstly, we'd gone with ball raced bearings on the crankshaft, compared with the bronze bushes on the original single cylinder. Um, and um, another significant change was we'd gone away from the casting and gone with a fully CNC machine crankcase which we had to contract out because we didn't have a machine to make such a thing. Um, we made a fairly block shaped cylinder head. That was the, here again, because that fitted in with our manual machinery that we had for manufacturing items. Um, we used some aspects of the carburetor design and came up with a new version that was operated from a, a drum valve from the uh, driven off the rear of the uh, crank shaft. Um, and you can see we've utilized the uh, exhaust systems off the single cylinder glow plug engine. So uh, that was what we came up with. We'd moved from one cylinders to two cylinders and I thought that was a significant move forward. But how far could we take this idea? What could we do next? So we wanted to power a 40 sized model aeroplane. Uh, World War II type of fighter, perhaps a P-51 Mustang. So we thought we'll need something maybe more like 10 cc's uh, of cubic capacity. So we decided we'd we went with a longer stroke um, of the compared to the original single cylinder crankshaft and we went with six cylinders and we came up with this motor the v6 so you can see we've got the output shaft of the v2 and we've got a modular design so we've begun using this modular design here so we've got three of the crank cases from the V-twin all coupled up. Um, the, the fueling system always was a bit, uh, bit of an issue with these because one carburetor tended to try to suck the fuel out of the next one if you just hooked them all together in line. So we had to have a, um, a manifold at the back with non-return valves and it was very clunky looking and this is a problem we found with building very small multi-cylinder engines that a lot of the fittings all got out of proportion and the, even the fuel piping is out of proportion with the size of the motor let alone you know, the size of the, the glow plugs um, it's got um, a there's the carburetor system there you can see so it had uh, triple carburetors so a bit of a fiddle for tuning. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can show you a bit of that on the video, the fiddliness of trying to tune this motor. Um, but there you go. We came up with it and we'll give you a bit of a view of it flying.
So I wondered, how far can we take this concept of modular design? Well, this is what we came up with. A V12. We uh, shortened the length of each crankcase so we could squeeze them a bit closer. So if we compare that to the V6 here, and how can we show you that? It's actually not double the length. It's sort of one and a half times the length. Still not proportionally right. But an interesting exercise. We also added the uh, idea of having a reduction gearbox so we can spin big propellers. What else did we do on this? Um, we tried experimenting with a carburetor that had the slider. And you can see aspects of this this concept engine, because this was never a production engine, that's transferred through to the Leslie V12. This one we tried um, with a fuel injection system at one stage. It's no longer on this engine, but it um, showed promise, um, but I'm not didn't have the resources to really get that all sorted out and into a state that it could be commercially produced. Um, so there you go. That was the culmination of the modular 1.5 cc starting out with just a single cylinder and ending up like that over many years of uh, tinkering with model aeroplane engines. Let's listen to how it sounds. That is positively the most awful sounding engine. It's still not right. I decided that it was time for a complete new engine design, a clean sheet of paper. So in the next video, we'll have a look at what came next in the journey to the Leslie V12 engine. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please remember to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching.